Inspiration Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. As always, with Jose Neuer and Ryan Boniface. Both doing good today, are we guys? Yes, thank you. Yes, there, thank mixing you, it up. I just realised for those on YouTube, they can see my mess of decorating going on behind me. So I'm going to blur my background so no one knows what's going on now. There we go. It's all covered. It's all safe. Thank you, everyone out there, for downloading, listening to us, watching us on YouTube. Follow us on social media if you like we're doing at listen to I N, listen T O I N. And of course, you can join us live for an early view of the podcast and get involved on Tic Tac, Tic Tac, Tic Tock. Oh, it's a Tic Tac. I've done that one a few times now. I've got a peach and spediment. Words come out weirdly. Uh, Jay Neuer underscore Inspiration Nation. Just follow him and see what is going on. So, guys, who is leading the conversation today well i'm not quite sure are we ryan we had a little chat didn't we just before we did yeah who is it then lee you're the one who does the the wheel of conversation the pickle of passing the See, so I, I was i was very deliberate here this week to right. not reference a wheel or a talking stick or a pickle of conversation because as much as you guys give me hassle for it, I think you secretly like it. And I thought, if I don't do it, I bet they reference it anyway. And there it was. I knew it was there. Don't tar no. me with Joe's brush. <laughs> <laughs> the one this week who is wearing the talking <coughs> cloak is Jose. Ah, yes, it's me. So uh, this week, uh, we're going to be talking about dreams. Oh. And there's a question about dreams. So when you're, well, you're both still young because, you know, I'm Uncle Joe. I'm a little bit older than you guys, as we say. And Ryan and Ryan is the son of Lee. So uh, we, we always have this conversation. So as as we're sort of like a little family unit on the podcast, I thought I'd just put this this question. When you were younger, as in, you know, hopes and dreams, before the world got hold of, hold of you, what was your dream? What did you want to do? when you were like when you thought when you were getting older what was the thing you'd be wanting to do for the rest of your life was there something was there a dream you had and what was it and why that is a very broad topic i don't know if i can even remember back that part my dreams of what i want to be why why can't you remember i don't know you you know when you go back and think oh when i was a kid I, i wanted to become this or that or what did you want to become? Actually, it's like you know, this is this is the thing, isn't it? So I want to talk about. There's a bit of context to this afters, but I mean, obviously, there was my phase where I wanted to be a professional wrestler when I was about twelve, with all my in the playground. When you was about thirty nine, and also when I was about thirty nine, and in fact, forty as I am, probably too old for it now. I would say. probably erring on the side of caution, with knees that are completely shot. Um, so professional wrestler then? So, so what no, happened? No, that wasn't. I mean, it, you, you know, silly kid thing is a little that, fame. Was it? But let's let's try. Is it a silly kid thing? Now you're looking back. Is it a silly kid thing? But there are lots of professional wrestlers, right? As we were talking before the podcast, one of our friends of the podcast, Mark Drager, maybe actually interviewing one of Lee's. I suspect heroes. No, you'll, you'll get me all hyped up and excited again. I can't deal and, with it. And uh, one of the heroes is the amazing Hulk Hogan. And Lee is a massive wrestling fan. So I would say, so, so you know, you had this dream to become a professional wrestler. What happened? So with my friends, when I was about 11 or 12, Mark Hale, his name is, shout out to Mark Hale. Um, we both liked that at the time. And in fact, we were going to, he had family in Canada and we were going to move to Canada and train to be wrestlers there. That was our dream. I love this. So what happened? What, what? 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 Why didn't it happen? Well, then we grew up a bit. Now that's the thing. That's what I want. Anyway, that's the thing. So, and I don't mean we grew as in grew out of silly that's dreams. That's the thing. Because actually, as you well know, I I revisited this dream in my twenties. I've told you both the story before. But I'd lost interest in that particular hobby when I grew a bit older, and you gain an interest in girls and stuff. And then I suppose on that grown up thing, you then start doing your exams and you have to start thinking about careers and then you go out and get a job and it all just becomes a bit more real, I suppose. As a second thing on that, Joe, I don't know how young you're talking about, but when I was mid teens, think, you know, a bit more, what do you want to do? I'd classify it under the terms of I wanted to be a businessman without really knowing what that meant. 
And in a sad way, I've almost realized my dream with the fact that I have an office job and I've done management stuff and I do project stuff and I live in a world of business cases and all that sort of stuff. So in terms of, you know, what would be successful for that, I didn't really know what that looked like at the time, but it was just a feeling in my head. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I like that. What about you, Ryan? What was your dream as a, as a, as a kid? What did you... What did you I'm like? pretty sure I've spoken about this before on the podcast, but similarly to Lee, I just wanted to be a businessman that worked in the in the city. Um, how that looked how and how that... Have... How old was you then when you when you said that? Or was there something Probably before... a similar age. Probably a similar age. Um, before that, it was just the childhood stuff where you would change occupation every week or every day. I want to be a policeman. I want to be a footballer. I want to fly well, I, do, I do think I, I want wanna... to be a Power Ranger at one point as well. Yeah. I mean, I think I think everyone kind of goes through that phase. And it is and it is just, I don't know, you, you see a job on television or online or, and you only see the good benefits of it, right? You know, you only see footballers come out once a week to play for 90 minutes and that's that. Otherwise, they earn a crap load of money for not doing much else. But behind the scenes, they probably work incredibly hard at their fitness and at their skill to be able to kind of maintain that. And that isn't an easy feat. And it certainly isn't 90 minutes of your week doing something and the rest of your week with your feet up at all, um, which is probably how as a, as a child you kind of view these things, right? But when I was any kind of coherent age of, of an understanding of life, it was similarly to Lee wanted to wear a suit to an office and do office things and whatever that was. I had no idea. Um, and it's actually quite weird how similar that thought process kind of was for me as it was for Lee. Maybe that's the male stereotype. Maybe it's a male stereotype. Perhaps. Yeah. Um, maybe not. I don't know. That that was, that's pretty much the, I suppose the thing I'm trying to get to is what, what stops us like because we talk oh well now i grew up and then i realized and stuff like that is it is it because the world is it because we go oh well we've got to be a bit more realistic and then the world sort of puts these things and we then sort of give in to things and don't do it or or is it that we then realize like you said uh, ryan was a really good point i want to become a professional footballer but then we realize actually the effort it takes to become you know the dedication and the practice that it becomes to, to become a professional footballer or in fact a professional wrestler is that what makes us not pursue that dream? Because there, there are professional footballers, there are professional wrestlers. What I want to get to is why do we not pursue the thing? Is it because we lose interest in it? Is it because we think, oh, we should, shouldn't aim so high? Or is it because we listen to people around us going, oh, well, you, you know, you, you, you dream a little bit here, you're never going to become a pressure. You never, do we listen to that rather so, than following the thing? Oh, sorry, on, okay. I'm going gonna, gonna, to, I will. And I get, I love the message of this because ultimately there's a message on the end of this about pushing and following your dreams and stuff like that, I presume. But I'm going to find it hard to say why I gave up on my dreams to an extent because I did pursue them. Um, no, t- so, talk to talk to talk to a little bit about that pursue it. And, and let's yeah, yeah. So, that. Um, and I've got a, I've got an additional story end of this with someone else as well. So, I. Whenever I was in my early 20s, probably a little bit before that, I was, you know, I was a big, I went through phase of fan where I am or not, but I am, I'm a fan on wrestling and I decided I wanted to give it a go. Now, at the time, I weighed, I'm going to say, no more than eight stone, maybe nine at a push. I was skinny. I mean, you remember me, Hastings Direct Days, Joe. I was skinny as anything. Um, and I'd never really been into sports and stuff like that but I decided I want to do it and I had a mate at the time who was a bodybuilder he was really into it like he was I just did the big arms out thing for those who aren't watching on YouTube um so I started to go to the gym with him with the aim of bulking up to get some strength and to get athleticism and cardio and whatever else and I spent a couple of years where I would go really hard on going to the gym like really hard and I put on a good couple of stone I got my cardio and to a really good place I would say that I did a fantastic gym routine and got to the stage where I felt right I'm going to give this a go and I found a school that it was out I mean it's you'll know where it is it was in Portsmouth so and for reference to those who don't know where I live compared to that that's a good three hours drive away a couple of hours on the train and I'm like right I'm <laughs> going to go for this so I went down on a weekend started going to classes did a couple of weekend all weekend courses which there was a real um 
paying your dues mentality back in that day in what you call the business. So it was literally like the gym was in a warehouse on a light industrial estate where literally there was like one toilet and one sink and two wrestling rings and loads of gym equipment and spent a weekend there that would involve going to Asda to buy some food, sneaking some McDonald's to use a loo because the one at the actual place was gross, sleeping in the ring in the sleeping bag that I bought of myself. It was quite full on doing it. And like we do cardio drills and stuff and things where you'd hang upside down on the corner and do crunches. And I got a lot of compliments from people on my fitness and stuff. So I think I'd got there with it. But it was, I say, it was quite far away. It was three or four hours away. I could really only do the weekends. I couldn't do in the week because of working. And it reached a crunch point where I'd almost have to give up on working or, you know, do part time work to be able to pursue in it. And actually, at that point, I took the choice that I'd given it a go. I was happy I'd found out some stuff, but chances of success in that against the career that I was starting to do stuff in. And that was the point I, I, I gave up, so to speak, about having pursued it for a while and then i'd say that mentality's carried on obviously we do this because of an idea i suggested to you joe you know some of the other stuff i do not everything works out in fact far more doesn't work out than does work out but i do think if i want to do something i will give it a go and i suppose there's that decision uh, that you said oh because you you realize that you'd have to give up something and that's why i say i do and i don't give up on it because i didn't just not go into it at all like it was a fancy i'd never look into but i did reach a crunch point where i stopped going down that path so is it the curiosity of being satisfied to say actually i'm it, i think there to a thought extent, to say yeah. was there a thought to say i'm not prepared to dedicate the time and give up this to become that i think that's it i think if you were going to do it than... you have to be a hundred percent in and well and you know what i'm like I refer, i'm a buffet person so i struggle with going a hundred percent in <laughs> on anything as in this is going to be my life and what i do and I just don't think that, you know, yeah, I don't, given some of the other stuff that's going on, it just didn't feel like the best option for me at the time. So looking back now, is there any regret that you didn't pursue it? No. Now, there are a, two or three people that went to that same school I did that made it. That are, I mean, one of them headlined a show in Cardiff last week in front of 70,000 people. Wow. So, you know, that was of lots of people that went there. And there's other degrees of moderate success from people that, that went to it. But actually... And so you know what you think you always think you're the most advanced time medical science wasn't where it was and the injuries that people have now got that started training the time i was there because of things we now know that we didn't know then the chances you know that i think the impact it would have had on me against even if i'd been massively successful i think I, I don't regret it that i didn't pursue it because i think i don't think it would have ultimately been the lifestyle for me i think i scratched enough curiosity to understand it yeah i don't i don't regret that i didn't pursue it yeah and i think that's the thing the curiosity you actually did go down the route and i didn't know that i, I don't remember you telling me that story about the actual going to the gym with the one toilet and sleeping in the gym that's proper pursuing it really isn't it and i remember getting back home like i'll get the train and i get back and you do they do a thing one of the first things they teach you is running the rope so if you've ever watched wrestling match they do what in the real world is a ludicrous thing of throwing someone in the ropes who actually turns around and bounces back towards you but you have to learn how to do that but they are effing hard so i'm like my entire back was just covered in bruises and I'd be at home practicing to do flips on the sofa and how to land and stuff wow, like that. And it was just... good. I'm glad I, I I'm glad I scratched the itch and I lived the lifestyle. Yeah. But I don't regret the path I chose instead of that one, I suppose. Yeah, and that's good because that's the that's the whole thing, I think, because you know, and again, actually I'm gonna hand over to Ryan now because I've got a few thoughts on a lot of this. But I Ryan, what about you? If you've got a story like this where, you know, or or have you got a regret that you think, you know what, I really should have pursued it? whatever what, what's on your what's, what's for you not really no i mean you said you said that there are professional wrestlers and professional footballers so it means that people can make it and i don't disagree with that now while lee was kind of telling you his story i did a bit of internet searching and there are currently 223 wrestlers signed to the wwe which is what as a child you would define as being a professional wrestler because you you aren't really aware of much else that goes on around it you might be aware of a few feeder feeder shows that perhaps move into that my knowledge of it is poor so that could be completely wrong but it wouldn't be beyond the realms of possibility to assume that exists there are also 7.753 billion people on the planet 
Would you like to hear what 223 out of 7.753 billion is as a percentage? Go on. I'm going to tell you. 0.00000287630594609%. So that means less than 0.00002% of people are professional wrestlers on the planet. So I think even as a child, you learn to understand that the odds are forever against you. Not impossible. Not impossible that you could win the lottery twice in a week. Not impossible that you could walk outside and get struck by lightning. But it's actually more probable that those things all happen rather than you becoming a professional wrestler from that age. And I think for a, from a, for a lot of kids, their parents probably give them a some probably a harsher lesson in realism. Others perhaps a lot more gentle lesson in realism as to how Look, if you want to pursue this, by all means, but don't get ahead of yourself and think that it's that easy and that simple to go from where you are now to the end game, because clearly it isn't. So I, I wouldn't say that because there are pro footballers, we could all do it or because there are pro wrestlers, we could all do it. In theory, yes, but in practice and in numbers, no, is probably the easier answer than by saying you've got more chance of being struck by lightning twice or whatever. That's probably where any dreams I had of huge international fame and success probably got extinguished. But that doesn't mean that, you know, what I've chosen to do is a disappointment on that. It doesn't mean that I made, you know, I'm annoyed at the life decisions that I made. I just took a, uh, a reasonable, took a reasonable decision to live my life in favor of the odds. Just because I'm not a pro footballer or a pro wrestler doesn't mean I can't be a, a, a wildly successful businessman in whatever way that that looked when i was 14 and whatever way that looks now you know so just because it isn't the dream i had when i was seven it doesn't mean that it that it is it can't be successful and i can't be happy as a result did you want to become a professional footballer was that the dream i think was every I, I think most boys did right i think that when you're what seven did, eight did, years what, old what did you do at that stage did, did you do anything like lee did you do like a did you do did obviously i imagine you joined a local football team but what was the i mean yeah people? but I, you know, life gets in the way, right? Things happen. Your parents work and they can't take you to matches all the time or you move away and don't get into a new team or you don't get on with people in the team and therefore you stop playing or you fall out of love with that idea or you get a little bit older and you decide to get a Saturday job or a Sunday job instead and start earning a lot more money and, and, and trying to be self-sufficient. You know, life happens. In the same way I'd like to sit here and do a 50,000-piece jigsaw tomorrow, I can't because life exists, right? I've got, I've got bills I to pay. I could I could imagine getting to piece 4, 49,999 and realise that one is missing and oh, want to no. throw myself out of a I window. I wouldn't even get to piece 10 before yeah, I want to throw myself yeah, out of a window. Definitely. I'm with Lee. I'm but you, you know, the, the, princ <laughs> the, the, the principle, the principle yeah, is yeah. the same, right? Like, I'd love to be able to sleep for the next week, but I can't because I've, you know, I've got life to do. It's just it, the re reality is hard and reality will always slap you around the face. You know, it's just part of life. There are ups and there are downs. There are ups when I was seven thinking that I could be the next Messi or Ronaldo. And there's downs where I'm 27 and work for Lee. <laughs> you got your ups and downs dream. the wrong way around there. Right? Oh, the, the wrong way around. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, again, you know what I mean. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It, again, it, but it doesn't mean, as I, and I'll go back to it, it doesn't mean that because I'm doing the job kind of candidly as I wanted to at 14, I work in an office, we don't have to wear suits anymore. Um, and it isn't in a big city, but, you know, I, I still businessman and lead and do whatever. Um, doesn't mean that that that, uh, that can't make me happy. I think when I was 14 and I had that, had that change of want or development, that, that that was the realistic outcome for me. I was quite intellectual at school. I was good with numbers. Um, I was good at talking to people as much as that's difficult to come across sometimes. But I presented well and I knew where my skills were and I just had to tailor a job around that. And that's kind of where, where I am. And I think especially with where you are, Ryan, something that, and this isn't just for you, there'll be lots of people with the same thing, is we're all at different points in our journey. And to people who, you know, want to be on a similar journey to you or don't even know what their journey are yet, you're in an aspirational position. So within your job, you're in a leadership position and there will be umpteen people that want to be in a leadership position who are looking at you yeah. 
as an aspirational thing and you'll be looking at other people as aspirational things you said if i can say it you said with me before about you know aspirational thing which if i'm honest it's lunacy to me that anyone would look at me and think oh i want to be just like that because i in my head i'm still 20 year old lee working for joe that's got no idea what he wants to do with his life um i was just if it's all right and i think i am still hyped up with my earlier coffee i've just got another story on the following the dream thing joe if that's all right so, yeah, of course it is, yeah. so this is someone i'm and i'm it's put it back in my mind i'm going to contact them to see if they'll they're happy to do a little interview with me but hopefully they don't mind me telling bits of their story but it's a and i might have referenced bits of this on earlier podcasts but a friend of mine who similar like ryan football obsessed like love love football really wanted to be involved with it um and actually he earned his while working stuff he earned his coaching badges um so he got his i think wait well, it's his um fa coaching badges and then his uefa coaching badges which is you know it's a really good level of coaching and works you know for local clubs and stuff like that and youth teams and whatever else and cut near to the end of the story he ended up working for the chelsea youth system um, coaching a t- and lived out in China for six months or nine months, or however long it was. He lived out in China for so long, working for the Chelsea feeder team in China, coaching them. And the youth team he coached for out there, their senior team that was like a feeder to Chelsea, Sven Goran Eriksson was their senior coach. So he got exposure to working with him on the same team. And I think that's, he then came back over here, got some other bits. <coughs> Sorry, decorating in a moment and dust is in my throat and ended up his office job and stuff now. But, you know, that's not ending up being the the captain for England or anything. And I'm not discouraging what he do because I think what he did is amazing. But actually, by pursuing that dream, he got those experiences that, you know, to live in China for so long and to coach. His job was coaching, which is exactly what he wanted to do, and working alongside a former England football manager. And so it's just amazing stuff from pursuing that dream. And this is kind of like with mine. I scratched my itch. I got exposure. And the last little story I was going to tell, and it's little cool moments I reflect on now that I didn't appreciate at the time. But about the time I was doing this, there's two things I'll give you, actually, if that's all right. One was I went to a show. There was a show in Coventry in England, a wrestling show, about 4,000 people there. It was the largest show in this country in forever and they had loads of huge names that i won't rattle off and stuff but it was a fantastic show but the company that i did the training with were like part of the support staff for it and one of the as i was going in through the door the guy in the door was oh lee how are you you need to come down you need to do some training again which at the time i didn't think much about it but when i look back on it now i'm like that's really cool that i went to this massive show and the people on the door knew who you know i was a little toe in that world that they knew who i was um and then another one, I ended up going to see, there was a big wrestler who was also part of the band. And I ended up going to see his band in Brighton. And there were some other people there that I met at the the um, training place in Portsmouth. And they they ended up like climbing on tables and kind of making a show of themselves. And actually in the last song, they were like, you, you guys, you've been great. Come up on the stage. And they were like, what? And ran up and got up on the stage. And then we all followed and were on stage for their last song and shook hands with them. And everything else like that, which, again, isn't me being the champion of the world. But it's also really cool, really unique to me experiences that I wouldn't have got if I didn't pursue that dream, which ultimately didn't I didn't go the distance with it and it didn't work. But back to and so it's my point on all those stories is what you always say, Joe, is it's not about the destination sometimes, it's just about the journey. And, you know, when I stopped doing it, it was almost like, oh, it's a shame I'm not. But actually, as I look back now, I can really appreciate the experiences I got from that journey in terms of memories for me or people I met or learnings I got from it that I wouldn't have got if I didn't go go down that route. So I say it didn't work work out, so to speak, but... I absolutely don't regret it. And I'm sure my mate doesn't regret his because they're just phenomenal experiences that make great stories when you're talking to people. Well, you just reeled off some great stories there. And I think there's a little bit of lesson in there that you pursue it. And it's not necessarily what, you know, you said that when we have a vision or something, you have a vision, but it actually starts to change as you pursue that passion or whatever. And that's what sounds like's happened. It's just evolved a little bit. And actually with you, Lee, now, You've been getting to a lot of wrestling stuff right now, haven't you? So it's not really died even. It's this still this 
this thing that you're doing, isn't there? In the back. Oh yeah, I've got a little. I've got a little vision I'm pursuing right now. Yeah, <laughs> and it just goes that whole thing, and it may not be envisions that oh, I'm becoming become a professional wrestler or like Ryan, I'm going to prefer professional football. But there'll be some sort of iteration of that in your life, like you've had those experiences, um, and so it's like explore, exploring the, the the curiosity, and then. It may not turn out to be, but you'll be something involved. You might be doing a blog or whatever, or a podcast, whatever it might be. And this is this whole thing. And I love that. And that's why I love about your mate about he did all those things and he's never going to go back and go, well, I just, I did have, I, you know, I, I was with Sven Goran Eriksson or whatever like that. But the fact that we followed that, I think it's a really important point and that there's not, you know, we have an idea of what we've been involved in, but actually we're not hooked up on actually what that end point is going to be, but some but working in those industries is still something that's still a positive that comes out of that and the stories that you told. Um, so I wanted to explore that really because life can beat you down and tell you you can't do things. And I think, you know, when Ryan was saying about, you know, you look at the, the percentage and they are so low, you know, when we don't pursue, we try and just, we put these things poten potentially in the way of something that we could do and get an experience of. And I think that's the sort of message I want people to take away. Still pursue, pursue it, scratch the itch see whether you're prepared to dedicate the time and effort because it does take a lot of effort it does take dedication to pursue whatever thing whatever you want to become but don't give up on it pursue it to the end to go do you know what this isn't for me and making that decision like ryan did and like you did when i told you a story about when i wanted to become a professional musician and my, my i remember my mother-in-law saying to me you want to get a proper job and I, and I went down the route of the proper job and i actually regret not pursuing that more vigorously and, that, and i'm going to be honest about it i you know i you know who i, I went i did recorded it potentially got recorded an album it could have gone on further i could have pursued further other things i didn't um but it's because of those things that you know maybe people say almost like impose their restrictions on you or you're not just you're not very conscious about it. i was not conscious at all i wasn't really you know did i was i really want it i still don't know did i really want it but it could have been something i could explore instead of going oh well i'm going to go because one of my, my things was just to end up bit going an office job with a computer and a, and, a, and a computer and a screen that was it i want to work in an office but the only real vision about what it was but then i chose that path because i said get a proper job all right i'll go and get a proper job rather than pursuing that passion and see where it, where it, led, where it led to and that is a great idea i do have i you know maybe i should have pursued it more i have my friend writing me letters going get a proper job get and i was practicing my you know guitar like practicing bass and could i dedicate more time if, I, if i've been more single-minded and gone right i'm gonna do this it may have turned out differently, but I'm not saying it would. It may not have done. I may have done what you did. I might have gone down a certain road and it may not work, but I'll never know that now. So, yeah. So I just wanted to, I, I wanted to make sure that, you know, that whatever the world says to us, that there's a real, you know, it says to us, oh, there's a small percentage of you making it. People have made it and you should pursue it and enjoy the journey of it. It may not work out as you planned it, but it might be a version of it that you enjoyed or you pursue it and you decide, it's not, it's too much work. I'm not prepared to dedicate the time. I'm not sure, but at least you then don't look back with the regret. Like I regret that thing. I don't want people to sit with that. Um, but again, I might not be talking to you if that had happened. It would be a totally different life. Um, I suppose that's the message really is that scratching at it is so important and, uh, and not letting the world tell you different and, you know, making sure that you pursued a thing and making your own decision, not let someone impose something on you um, that you shouldn't pursue it um and like my daughters i mean she's pursuing a music career and she's at uni um you know first of all she wants to work at google now she's changed to work at uni but she may not end up becoming an artist but she might work in that industry and it might be the thing that she wants to do we don't know but it's really interesting to see the journey and see how they're pursuing their journey and see how that's going to pan out and that's something i want to pass on to them that not to live in that regret uh, and it sounds like you two haven't which is great because you pursued those things and that's something that i think is really really important anyway I'm going to shut up now and let you uh, let you take on that what you will. No, that's good, Joe. Countdown time is going on. So oh, I'll right, just yeah. do the little bit of shilling where I say, if everyone likes what we are doing here, pursuing our podcast stream, then head over to inspirationnation.org.uk, merchandise, coaching service, Joe's newsletter, full archive, loads of good stuff. Um, like, subscribe, leave us a review on podcast platforms and YouTube. And of course, follow Joe at jn underscore inspiration nation on tiktok and you can watch us live and interact with the show which we very much appreciate my i suppose my takeaway slash inspirational message from joe's inspirational message because i really like this is it's almost it's don't give up on your dreams until you're ready to give up on your dreams like so that. it's not you don't you don't pursue it into the ground but you know give it a go make that informed decision but don't 
don't wake yourself to it to the point that it stops being a dream and it becomes an obligation. I really like that obligation part, by the way. Yeah, it's great. That's what I've got for you today. Ryan, closing thoughts from you, my friend. Your dreams are allowed to evolve, I think. That's probably what I'd take away. That's good. I like that very much. And Jose, on your topic? Yeah, mine's just just don't live with regret. Scratch the itch. I really, I think I like that message and just see where it goes. You really don't... need to get some cream for that, Joe. You've talked about this itch a lot okay. today. Get to the I doctors, like... get some cream, yep. get it sorted out. But I do like that whole thing about not being pedantic on the end vision of it because I, I was very much like that and I've been like that and it's very much an evolution about what Ryan said. So, yeah, some really good insights, guys. I've really enjoyed the conversation. It was really good to hear about you know, a bit of your journeys on that. So I think some new bits and pieces, really, in, uh, in the podcast that we haven't heard. So I've really enjoyed that. No, it's good. Thank you. And it's, it's nice. stuff I've not thought about for years, so it's quite nice to reminisce on that as well. Great stuff. So we're going right. to be wrapping this bad boy up. We are. I will count us down. We'll be back again next week. Three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch you guys, Catch you guys, guys next later. Time. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this inspiration nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another videos go live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.